Dr. Akiva Gamlo Bell, Dean of Jewish Studies at the Nainoak Torah Institute, LLC. Welcome to Passover. This is a discussion, Passover, the last six days of Rabbi Jesus' life on earth. And this is our textbook. I encourage you to pick a copy of the information contained in here will be tremendously enlightening and helpful. Now, dear ones, we have just finished chapter one where we laid out some perimeters about how we're going to approach our discussion. We have one rule that we're going to take a literal interpretation. We took a second rule which says it must be credible. We took a third rule which says we must provide references. So we're going to talk just a little bit about references. Our subject is how time was measured in Testament, okay? Now, you might wonder, well, why is time uh, a big issue here? Well, it's a very big issue because uh, during the last six days of Rabbi Jesus' life on earth, Matthew quoted 20 plus references, either about days, weeks, months, or hours. Uh, Mark, Luke, and John add another 38. So between these four writers, they're basically discussing time 60 times during the last six days of Rabbi Jesus' life on earth. Now, the measurement of time is uh, unique, uh, dear ones. Um, God is not bound by time. But God created time for us to be bound by and for us to measure by. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, we read, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, of the heavens, to divide the day from the night, and to let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So based upon the sun, the, the sun solar system and the lunar system, the moon, okay, we measure time. We, we measure directions by the stars. So uh, today in our world, in the 21st century, uh, a good many calendars are based upon the solar system, 365 days or six a year. Uh, however, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, is based upon the lunar system. Now, with the solar system, we have uh, some interesting points we'd like to make. Uh, first, the, uh, the month, with the, there's one month that's only 28 days, and then there's a few months that are 31 days. However, in HaTorah, in the Holy Scriptures, time is measured by 29 days in a month, or 30 days in a month. There's never 28, there's never 31. It's either 29 or 30. Now, when we talk in terms of time, uh, I want to just say right up front, I know it's very confusing, and that's just how it is. It's very confusing. But in our book, we have spent a lot of time to be detail-oriented to help make it more understanding. Now. When we think in terms of just the names, for example, uh, we have these days that are all named after pagan gods and, and deities. Uh, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't know why anybody would want to follow a calendar that's named after pagan gods. That each month of the calendar uh, is named after a pagan god. So I don't understand why we want to follow that type of calendar. HaTorah's calendar is Yom Echad, Yom uh, Sheni, Yom uh, Shilishi, Yom Rivi'i, uh, Yom uh, Hamishi, Yom Shishi, Yom Shivi'i, or Shabbat. So we have a number counting system. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. We also have the same system for the months of the year. Instead of giving them a name, the, the first month of the year in the Bible, in the, in the Torah, in the Holy Scriptures, is Yom 
or is a Chadish Echad, the first month, the first moon. So we have these different measuring systems. Time is measured from the creation being completed. So once the six days were completed, the, the, the new year, the very first year was already in progress. And everything from then until now is measured from creation, F-C, from creation. However, in uh, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1, after the Lord God uses a mighty hand to bring the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt, he said to Moses, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So all the people of Israel measure time from the first month. Now that's different than the month from creation. We begin our religious new year at Passover time. And every, every holiday is measured based on Passover time. Okay, now if you're not, if you're not confused, you're doing really great. <laughs> so then to make it even more difficult, a few thousand years ago, uh, the Catholic Church come along and uh, they introduced the uh, uh, Gregorian calendar. And so, oh my gosh, now we have so much confusion. <laughs> our day begins, in, in the Bible, our day begins at nightfall. And the other calendar, it, it begins at midnight. So uh, what we have is we have two competing forces. God said that time was to be measured by the sun, the moon, and the stars. And so what did religious men do? They ignored what God said. They said, well, we're going to just start it at midnight. We don't care that God said it needs to be measured by the sun, and it needs to be measured by the moon and by the stars. No, we're just going to begin it at midnight in the story. So you see, we have these issues uh, regarding time. Now, before we can really go further into our discussion, uh, the, the main thing that we want to do is to realize that because the writers of these four books have referenced time about 60 times, okay, that means it's important. It's very important. So when we think in terms of the Passover thousands of years ago that Rabbi Jesus participated in, Matthew, Mark, and Luke say that uh, Rabbi Jesus participated in the Passover. However, John says he only participated in the Last Supper and that the Last Supper was before the Passover. So we have these uh, conflicting reports from different individuals. Now, based on Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, that Passover night began on Yom Shishi. See, when it gets dark, when it's nightfall, in, in the Bible, a new day begins. So that was the beginning of the sixth day. This is, that nightfall would have been called Thursday night. So all the events that took place from the Passover meal until the time Jesus was put on the tree, Rabbi Jesus was put on the tree, that happened on what you would call, perhaps, a Friday. And many say that that Friday is a good Friday. I don't call it a good Friday. I don't see when anybody dies, it's a good Friday. It doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, the point is, is that just before nightfall, Rabbi Jesus was taken off of the tree uh, by a very uh, observant man, and he was placed in a tomb. And we have references for that. Mark 15, 42 says, and now the eve was come because it was the preparation day. It was still the preparation day, the day before the seventh day, the day before Sabbath. That is the day before Sabbath. And then we have uh, Luke 23 and uh, verse 54. And the day was the preparation day and the Sabbath was drawing on. So we realize that the first night Rabbi Jesus stayed in the tomb was a Friday night. So Friday night, Saturday night, then Sunday. So it's impossible for Matthew 1240 to be accurate. Three days and three nights in the belly of the well, 
and the Son of Man would be three days and three nights in the earth. We can already see the three nights didn't happen. We could go on into further discussion about this, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus on the absolute importance of time and why these references, these 60 references, were given by these writers. Thank you for joining me for me.